with more on that. So, Drew, the question we've been trying to get to is who knew what and when, and, and especially whether in 1998, when his own defensive coordinator was being intensely investigated by multiple agencies, if Joe Paterno knew the university police, the college state police, child services were investigating Jerry Sandusky for alleged child molestation. There are records that point to that in university files, aren't there? Should be. That type of information commonly found in usual public records accessible, Anderson, at a public institution on who knew what and when. But as you pointed out, Penn State and three other schools in this state granted an exemption to releasing records. Just put this in perspective, Anderson. In 2007, 2008, there was another investigation into more allegations against Sandusky. And the state's new open records chief says that was the exact time that Penn State specifically Penn State's president went to the legislature to make sure their records would be kept secret. What that means in essence is that while every other Commonwealth agency, governor's office, police departments, townships, school districts are subject to this law and would be required to, to provide public record, Penn State is exempt. That came as a result of a series of lobbying efforts uh, through um, the House of Representatives that was taking a look at rewriting Pens Pennsylvania's right to know law, which was really among the worst in the nation. And at that juncture, uh, the president of Penn State was one of the key lobbyists testifying before the House Committee on, I believe it was August 7, 2007, seeking an exemption for Penn State. So, Drew, do we know uh, why the president of Penn State wanted this exemption that was around the time of, of this investigation? We, we know what Graham Spanier told the legislature. Uh, he was concerned, he said, about cost, about compliance, about competitive reasons for keeping records, also privacy. But I asked Terry Mutchler of the Open Record Act office if she thinks the real reason was to hide a damaging investigation. Here's what she said. I think that view would be shared by many open records advocates. What you have to keep in mind is, is that if you were at any of the police departments in the Commonwealth, um, you know, incident reports are in fact available under the right to know law. Penn State, because it enjoys, along with Temple, Pitt, Lincoln, and, uh, you know, the, this exception, uh, they are not subject. So the, the exemption to release the records doesn't mean they can't just release them. Is, isn't there anyone that campus willing to open the records to show, you know, what they knew, who knew what and when? Yeah, you, you're spot on, Anderson. They could if they wanted to. But when we went to try to find those records, literally going to detectives' homes who were involved in this, to the school, to the police department, instead of getting any records, we were sent this letter. This is from the university attorney denying us any access to these records based solely on the exemption Penn State has. In fact, the current police chief of the university, he wouldn't even come out and talk to us in person. Uh, he was just behind a wall. We could hear him, but over the phone, telling us that everyone at his department would not answer a single question. Right. And, you know, they're not telling us anything. You can imagine my frustration. Usually we go to a police department and we get public records every single place I've ever been to. And that's what I don't understand about, particularly about Penn State, because these records that are normally available at seemingly every police department I've ever been to in the United States of America, they're not released here, which would answer a lot of our questions. Didn't answer a single question, Anderson. The open records chief in this state says, no doubt if this were anywhere but Penn State, the public would know who knew what and when. Let's just, you know, do a flat comparison. If this were an investigation involving another university, say East Stroudsburg University, that did have a, uh, a scandal at its, at, at its doorstep, they were subject to the right to know law. You were able to obtain in that situation emails, um, copies of incident reports of the police department, uh, any kind of um, policies that came out with the board of trustees, that would all be available. At Penn State, however, that's off limits. Anderson, I do want to point out we did place a call to the home of a former president of Penn State, Graham Spanier, like almost everyone else here. He 